I am so excited that you're here today. So welcome to my show. I have the Sandy Lawrence in the room. Oh my gosh. She is an expert in PR and media and all the stuff that we never understand. <laughs> How are you doing, Sandy? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Hi, Tanya. I, I live in a world where nobody understands what I do. So <laughs> welcome to my world. <laughs> So what I really want everyone to know is that it's really about connecting to amazing people. That's what PR is, is getting your name, your message, your mission out there so that people will know who you are and why they should get involved with you. And right. So Sandy is like one of the best people and she is such a giver. I just love connecting to people like hers. Every one of you needs to know her, follow her, get to know her. She's just one of those people that just thrills me. She's the founder and CEO of Perceptive Marketing and one of the top 25 marketing public relations firms in Houston or the world? Houston. Oh, Houston. We'll just say the world. <laughs> we'll fudge a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, Houston. Exactly. And she's also an author. And I want to give her the opportunity to tell us how, how did you change your world? How did you become this big PR expert? And people that people are like, oh my gosh, it's Sandy. Well, you know, Tanya, that's a great question. So thank you for asking, because I love, love, love sharing that story. And um, it's my, this, my story of this phase of my life. I always call my life in phases. So this phase of my life started on a Monday morning sometime early June 2002. And I'm at work. I worked for a, um, a an IT firm. I was in PR and marketing there, uh, crisis communication, all those fun, loving things to do. And so, I, and I loved my job. Absolutely loved my job. Loved my manager. Loved everything about it. So I go to work this Monday morning like any other Monday. No indication whatsoever that this day was going to be different. And I did what everybody does on the Monday morning when they show up at work. They read their email. So, you know, I got my cup of coffee, sat down, looking through my email, and there this innocent little email says, you've been selected for early retirement if you choose. And I'm honestly, Tanya, my world just came to a halt, a stop. I felt like every, the whole planet just stopped to see what my reaction would be to that email. And so I'm like, okay. So I read it a few times. Went and talked to a few people, got coffee, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm, I was volunteering and it told me all the details. This is how much money you'll get. Here's what you, you know, here's what your package is, all that stuff. So first thing I knew was some of that was going to have to go pay Uncle Sam. So that didn't mean I was going to get that much money. So I forwarded that email to my CPA and I said, okay, here's the package I'm getting. And if I choose, those words, you know, kept standing out, if you choose. And so I said, um, you know, what I want you to do is put this into my packet, my, my um, financial stuff, and tell me what, how much do I pay in taxes, and what will I get? And she did that, and she made a comment to me when she sent it back and said, you know, obviously this is not enough for you to live on for the rest of your life. If, it, if you do, she said, it won't be that long of a life so I'm like yeah that's true <laughs> however she said it's enough seed money for that business you've always wanted to start and I'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> so that began the longest week of my entire life um I, I couldn't sleep I you know had trouble concentrating I had to let them know, fill out the form, and have it back to them by Friday at noon. So, I mean, as a Christian, I trust trust God, and so I'm like, prayed about it. Should I do this? Went to my husband, obviously, because at that point, I was making, I mean, I had a marketing PR high-end position, and he was um, a field engineer for um, IBM, so I made more than he did. And I'm like, okay, so if we don't have my salary. We just have your salary. You know, what are we going to do? And so we talked about it. We talked about all of it. Talked to his, you know, his parents were very supportive of me and the decision. So I talked to them. His mother said, you know, if you decide to do that, can I be one of your clients? And so I'm like, let me see. So all week long, this went on. 
back and forth, back and forth, talking to people, getting all this information, all this feedback. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And on Thursday, I still didn't know. And so I'm sitting with a group of friends. I've been there 20 something years. So I knew all these people. And of course, everywhere that I went, they're like, are you going to retire? Are you going to accept it? You know, it's all this pressure on me. <laughs> so I'm sitting with these guys that had been friends of mine and worked with me for years. And so I'm, I love roller coasters, you know, and I, I, they knew that everybody knew that every time we had an event at, you know, Six Flags or something, I always rode the high roller coaster posters, the dungeon drops, all those scary things. So I told them, you know, I feel like I'm at the top of that tallest roller coaster that I've ever ridden. And if I'm sitting in that roller coaster, I love it. I put my hands up in the air, I scream, and down we go. Well, here, you know, here I am at the top of that roller coaster, but there's no car. And nothing going over the top. I'm going to have to jump if I do this. And I said to him, I do believe that's what I'm supposed to do, but I don't think I have the courage to do it. And so that, that thought stayed with me the rest of the day. I went home that night before I went to bed. I really said this little prayer, God, you know, tomorrow's it. This is it. Nothing, no word from you, no nothing. And I said, you know, God, okay, so let's have this little talk here. First of all, I, I want to do the right thing. So if I don't hear any message from you and I don't want to sign, I just want to know, what am I going to do? Um, and I'm, if I don't hear anything, if I don't have any inclination, I had no, you know, sometimes you feel this like little tug, I should do that, this gut feeling, enough. I'm nothing, I had no, nothing. So I went to bed, got up the next morning, and and this is where the story really, I mean, honestly, I, I have trouble, I get chills when I remember it, but I got up the next morning, went to get my clothes out of the laundry room, and coming back to my bedroom, Walked through the tele, walked through the kitchen. There was a television in there, and this television was. Um, I heard Elvis music, and I'm like, you know, because I'm an Elvis fan, and I'm usually tuned in to if, if something's going on. And I, I'm like, this is not January. It's not August. It's not his birthday. It's not his death. So, what is this? And I went in, and um, there was a person singing an Elvis song. And it was Winona Judd. And Winona was um, performing. So she's performing in Washington, in uh, New York City. It's Morning America. Charlie um, Gib Gibson was there doing the interviewing. And he went out to talk to her. It's like their summer um, concert series or something. And he went out and so he said, um, so he started talking to her about her mother. Her, she and her mother had just, they were the Judds. Country music stars, the Judds, and her mom had hepatitis C. So she had just performed her first concert ever by herself. And he goes, so what was it like, that first concert? Was it, were you nervous? Were you scared? And she said, I felt like I was at the top of this huge roller coaster. And I'm sitting there and realize, oh, my gosh, there's no car. There's nothing to go down. So I'm going to have to jump if I walk out on that stage. And, and I started getting chills then. I'm like, okay, sounds like my story. And then she just looked right at that television and said, if you're listening to my story today and you're facing something similar, you've got a decision to make and you don't know whether to jump or not, I'm telling you, jump. It will be to your success. And I'm like, oh, my God, I started crying. I'm like, I okay. chill bumps. <laughs> So I go to go get dressed and go to work. And I, the minute I got there, I found my assistant and I told her, and she goes, get me that piece of paper. We are walking to the fax machine now because if that was not a message for you, I don't know what is. And so she said, I'm going to make sure you don't change your mind. And we did. We signed it. And, and honestly, Tanya, when I faxed that, I was so sure that I had done the right thing. It was like, I never felt so free, so encouraged, so excited, so anything in my life. And I walked back down through all those people that I'd known for years, and I had my little piece of paper, and I'm like, I'm retired. I'm retired. <laughs> I'm retired, and you're not. And so it was, I mean, it was just like, oh, my gosh. And I have to tell you that I'm, there's been plenty of times, so I've been doing this for 12 years now. 2014 is my 12th anniversary. And there's been lots of times that roller coaster 
seemed to be going on without me. And I felt like my business was a roller coaster plenty of times. And if it wasn't for being a, there's plenty of times I would have quit even, but I could always look back to that time and say, you know what? I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm learning the lesson I'm supposed to learn. And this phase of my life honestly has been the, and you know, as a business owner yourself, it is an incredible life. It does have its ups and downs. It does have its challenges. And it's not for everyone. I totally get it's not for everyone. But the feeling I get when I have my own business and I'm helping someone and I'll tell the story of helping other people when I get to later in this, in this and it's felt with you. Um, but I just can look back at that time and know that I did the right thing. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, how encouraging is that? And what a lot of people, what I find is that people either never get on the roller coaster, they don't even start the ride, yeah. or every time it comes back around and they see that, you know, ending, they get off and they never continue the ride, you know, and the fun is, is the ride is going through and yeah, there's challenges, but there is huge leaps and bounds and so much excitement. Yep, lots of highs. There's some lows along the way. Sometimes <laughs> when it's challenging, sometimes when, and I, you know, I've reinvented my company several times. So it, it doesn't look at all like it did when I first started. However, mm -hmm. and now I'm actually moving from being perceptive marketing to being perceptive public relations because I am just narrowing my focus. And, and it's all been, it's, it's all been great. Been the learning, the people I've met, like you, like Michelle Sism that I work with, like my clients that I've worked with, um, Elizabeth McCormick, all the people I've met throughout, all the people in PSA, Public Speakers Association. If not for taking that challenge, I would never have had the opportunity and the blessing to know you and to know all these other wonderful people. So it's been a really wonderful ride. I've enjoyed it all. Well, and it's about tweaking, you know, and you just said it best. You've got to put yourself out there to find out what works and what doesn't work. And when people find something that doesn't work, they're like, oh, see, told you it didn't work. And I'm like, no, that's just part of the, the transition to figure out what does work for you. It's all growth. There's a lot of growth, a lot of times. And I've used a lot of analogies over the years, over the past 12 years of what, you know, what this, this um, phase or this time I'm going through, what does that mean? And it's a lot of, it's a lot of growth. It's a lot of breaking apart that seed so that the, you know, the new me can come through. And, and I'm not the same person. You know, I, I am, more confident today than I was 12 years ago. I'm more adventurous. I take risks. You know, I came from living a nice, safe life where I got a salary every week and, you know, I planned my life and I knew exactly what was going on. To now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm planning a business and sometimes it goes away I plan it and sometimes it doesn't. So, <laughs> but it's, it's exciting. Either way, it's exciting and I love it. Well, and you're one of the directors for the Public Speakers Association, which I love, you know, it's like, woohoo. And one of the things that I, you know, because we've almost known, you've been a part of PSA almost on our entirety. You know, we launched in January of 2013. I think you came in that February yeah. or so. Yeah. And I've seen you grow and you've seen me grow. And that's what it's about is helping people move through the transitions and giving expertise when you see someone needs it. And I think that is something that a lot of people, um, they just don't offer, you know, they just take it as, you know, you either have to pay me or go away. And to me, it's about helping each other move forward. Don't you find that? Absolutely. And it, I mean, and I'm a, I am a giver. You said that earlier. I love helping people and there is no other way I'd rather help someone than to help them. If they're a new company, a startup company, um, help them with mentoring, help them with, you know, understanding how to grow a business sharing. I mean, I've been very honest about some of the mistakes I've made. I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes in running a business. I didn't have any experience as a business owner. So, um, so sharing what I've gone through, sharing my story has been a big part of the mentoring and the help that I've been able to provide, not only help them by offering some of my services occasionally when they need them 
or help by mentoring some of the younger directors in PSA or any of that. It's just all, it, it all works together that there's just so many opportunities to be part of your organization and be friends with you and friends with Michelle and Bellamy and all the people, all my clients, Kathy Lofman and, you know, um, all the people I work with that are just, it's just, you know, it's just great to be able to help people. Well, I always think of it as, you know, if you're playing a chess board, you know, I can see somebody and see how to play, go all the way to checkmate with them, right? So if someone wants to say be a speaker and they want to figure out how to do the speaking world, how to make money from it, I've already figured it all out. But a lot of people are just trying to figure out how to make the first move. They don't even know how to make the first pawn. And those are the times that you give, you know, you're just helping you make that even that first decision. <laughs> and then once you start playing the game, that's when you stand up and you're like, okay, now it's about actually hiring Sandy, actually hiring me, actually hiring people to get you to that next phase so that you can win the game. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I met with some young girls today this afternoon who are starting a magazine and there's so many people that have so many really bright, brilliant ideas. And I love working with young people because they are creative and these people are just graduated from the art Institute and all this other. And I was, you know, I just shared some things with them and it was just great to be able to see, you know, how excited young people still get when you, you know, offer them a few suggestions that, you know, you might want to try this, you know, have you thought about this? And it was just, it's just fun for me. I love doing that. I was just speaking at a fraternity sorority group at the University of Texas last night and you just see their little minds and they're and it's just all the wheels are broke you know working our way and they're not at that I'm afraid to do anything stage. They're still open for any possibilities, you know. And sometimes it's a little too much because you're like, okay, you know <laughs> but it's so adorable. I just love working with kids. I know I do, I do too. <laughs> so tell us how you change the world. What's some tips, tips and techniques that you can give us um, to help us further in our business and our, you know, what we're wanting to do. Oh, I would just love to share some tips with oh, you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I have learned is that people don't understand PR. Like we started this whole conversation is a lot of people don't understand. It's overwhelming. Um, I talked to people that say, well, I sent a press release and nothing happened. <laughs> My PR, I spent all this money. I didn't see the results. So my first thing that I work with people is to help them understand that publicity helps you to get known outside your normal circles. So we all are, you know, we're all part of social media. We live in a social media world today. And so we're all... Um, understand how to you know post on facebook and send a tweet and all this stuff but how do you get outside that because the people that see that are some people that already know you they already either have a relationship with you or they've heard you or they know about you from you or from other some of your other previous stuff so what i do is help people understand how to get outside that circle how to get publicity and we do that through um, so several different channels, but first I want to tell you about the story, Tanya. I love this story. I was reading a book last weekend. It was right before I was um, speaking at Michelle Sism's con uh, conference or three day event. And I was like, what illustration can I love stories? Like, what illustration can I use that will really help the people there know what I do? And so I happened to pick up a book and started reading it. And there was a story, which is true. I checked it out on, on Google. <laughs> it must be true. <laughs> so this, um, in 2007, in January, a young violinist was in L'Enfant Stadium, um, L'Enfant Center, which is a metro center for Washington, D.C. And he went over and picked up a violin in the middle of the rush hour. People going, coming, going, coming. Thousands of people going. He started playing this violin. Nobody paid any attention. Nobody stopped. Nobody did any. A few people threw change in, you know, this little cup he had out there. So I'm reading this story and found out that this was like a social experiment. Two days before, this same guy who was Joshua Bell, who was a world-renowned violinist, had played in a concert there in Washington, D.C. Tickets were $200 for the nosebleed. So that was the lowest ticket. And it was a packed house. 
And as I read that story, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my PR story. Because when they knew who he was, they were willing to pay any price he charged. When they didn't know who he was, they didn't even give him the time of day. Didn't stop, didn't listen, and he played the exact same music on the same million-dollar Stradivarius that he played. Everything was the same. In one scenario, he was known. In one scenario, he was not heard of. So what I do is help people be able to be known enough to charge for their services, for their programs, to have a ticket price and have people be interested and willing to pay whatever your price is because they know who you are and they know what you do and they know the results of what you've done. And all you have to do is tell people about it. Really, it's, sim it's that simple. You tell people about it. So my tips start with, first of all, tell people when you do something. So if you get an award, if you have a new product coming out, if you're launching a new business, if you're doing anything that you can tell people about, then tell them and tell them through social media, but also use press releases. That has become my most popular way of helping my clients get visibility. And that is creating a press release. Um, so some of my clients get three press releases a month. It's like you can't do one press release and think that uh, the whole world is going to hear about you. you got to do more, and you have to do regular, ongoing, once a month, twice a month, three times a month. And so I come from, you know, I come from an old school of, you know, no, for marketing and PR, it's all about knowing the value, um, knowing the benefits, and putting that in your value proposition, all that. So that's what PR is today. It's just differently. So today, I take a press release. I'm working on a press release right now for one of my clients, Melanie Deshong, as you know, and she's got a three-day conference coming up in Houston, October 24th, 25th, 26th. We're sending out all kinds of press releases. And what we're doing is sending them out through, sending them directly to the media. We're sending them through a PR distribution service. And then we're also posting them on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, pictures of her on Instagram, Pinterest. What we're doing, and it's not just me, it's our whole team, what we're doing is promoting everything to, in every using every vehicle that's possible. And I saw this work with Michelle's event a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, now with Bellany. I've had clients be on um, Oprah. I had one client on Oprah. I've had clients on um, uh, Fox News, on Sean Hannity. Um, so the thing is, you just keep going with getting the word out about you and at the same time building relationships. So what I do now is capitalize on a lot of relationships I've made for 12 years because in the very beginning, I started out by understanding that marketing is building relationships. And so now today I know those people, but it takes starting. So I tell anyone, you know, you don't have to hire me to do PR. It's not rocket science. It's time consuming. It's good to have a path. It's good to have a plan. Know which direction you're going. Know what your goals are. Know who you want to build relationships with. And then keep following through that. But the big secret is just keep on doing it because there will be results. And sometimes it's like that tipping point where you all of a sudden you've done enough publicity that the tips over the scale tips and then all of a sudden you're being called and you're ready. And then the second half of that is be ready when they do call. Right. Because when they call and say, we have an opportunity, can you send us some information and have something ready to send? I'm actually getting ready to do a webinar in a week or so on when not to do publicity and what some mistakes you can make with publicity. And one of them is to not be ready to do all the sending out of the press release, all the calling. And then when they call you, you're not ready. So, um, so, so there's a lot, of, a lot of different sides to that. And I've got some stories about that, but, um, anyway, so that's, that's a big way of helping how I help people is that I help change their lives by getting them in front of the people that want to hear their story and that in turn want to be their clients or want to attend their event or want to be part of their program or want to join public speakers association or, you know, getting the word out to people that are not part of your normal 
circle of influence. Love it. <laughs> That's what I do in a nutshell. <laughs> well, and I, for me, it's frustrating because people will walk up to me and they're like, oh, I want to be paid $25,000 to speak on stage. How do I do that? And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And where did they get this idea that suddenly they're the expert and that everyone already knows them? You know, it's just amazing to me. And so you, people do have to get their name out there. And I think that's really hard for most people to grasp that it's not about the subject. It's not about, you know, what their expertise is and not really even their message is about who they are and why do people care? Why would they care? Why should they care? You know, absolutely. Why should they care? And that that's our responsibility. It's their responsibility to make sure people know why they should care. Why should they care about what they do? And that's going back to the old school of knowing what the value is that you bring to, you know, to your audience. I tell people all the time that tell me I'm looking for sponsors and I'm like, then, you know, cause I love sponsoring, but I want to know what I'm going to get out of it. You know, what's going to be the return on my investment? What are you doing? That's going to provide value to me that I would want to invest my money and my time in what you do. And the same with as your scenario of getting on stage for $25,000, why? Why should I hire you to be on my stage for $25,000 if nobody's heard of you? Because I want somebody on my stage that's going to bring in people to hear them. Exactly. So you taught us all very well. Sometimes you have to start small. Sometimes you have to do it without getting paid. And sometimes you have to pay to speak because you're getting, you're building, you're doing exactly what I'm doing. You're helping them get publicity through speaking. I'm helping them get publicity through press releases and other forms of getting the media's attention. And I think that's one of the problems is everyone tries to do one thing instead of realizing that it takes different value propositions to reach different types of groups, you know? And so they have to be in the newspaper or they have to get on TV or they have to be on internet TV or whatever it is. There's all these different avenues. And I can see that it makes people confused because they're like, Oh, there's so many things to choose from. Well, get really specific on what your message is and then put it out there and then find people like Sandy that can help you, you know, find people that can do social media, find people that can help you with each one of those components. That's true. And so that it is overwhelming. It's like you said, it's a lot to do. So um, having someone guide you, having a coach, having a mentor, or having some, and until you get to the point where you can actually pay someone to do it for you, it's still better, I think. So having you with, with the PSA has de definitely helped mentor a lot of wannabe speakers because they have an opportunity to attend the PSA luncheons and, and get a lot of training. Uh, and I've, I mean, I have learned so much from the other people coming in to speak at PSA on the training that they've given us on things to make my presentation better, to make my, you know, my speech more concise. With you, I've learned, you know, hey, it's not about being perfect. You know, and I'm a perfectionist. I like everything to be like right in place. But your first rule was you can't be perfect. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to be perfect then. So, and I'm a good member, so I'm going to be perfect. Well, I think that people coming out of corporate really have a hard time with that. And I totally get it. If they weren't perfect and they weren't doing things right, they could get fired. So I understand why people are so worried about pushing that first email out. Oh, well, what if it offends somebody or what if they didn't like the way I said this or whatever, instead of just pushing it out and finding what happens. <laughs> I know, I know. So, but that's, that's risk. That's the risk you take. And that's, you know, that's not easy the first few times. I, mean, I think it gets easier. And now, you know, I don't really stop and think about it. But I can tell you the first time I ever did a webinar, it took me like seven months before I finally just said to myself, just do the webinar. Yes. Whatever happens, just do it because I could be in this planning stage for the rest of my life. So it always takes just like you've taught us. And, you know, we all learned by practice and by doing is just take that first step. It's, you know, do it, just do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're giving away something like, you know, I just get so excited this part of the show. So tell us what you're giving away because it's like amazing. 
Okay, so what I have is my website is Perceptive, and that's P E R C E P T I V E, public relations, perceptive public relations.com. And on there, you'll see on the right side a little thing where you can um, get a free gift, which is 50 plus PR ideas and tips. So, just tips that you can read. I don't know about you, but I like tips and I like just to read some tips and it gives me ideas to try this or try something else it's just like brainstorming and then also on that same site there's a PR assessment so if you want to have a 30 minute conversation with me on your PR what you're currently doing what's working what's not working giving you some more tips giving you some ideas one-on-one -on -one, then fill out that PR assessment click submit it will come into my inbox magically and um, and I'll be in touch with you and we'll set up a time Awesome. So make sure that you take advantage of that. Give them the website one more time. Perceptive. That's, and Tanya told me to be sure I spell it. Not everybody can spell perceptive. P-E-R-C-E-P-T-I-V-E, -E, public relations, perceptivepublicrelations.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, Tanya. Yay. Thank Yay. you. Yay. So everybody, Obviously, you want to get to know Sandy. Follow her on social media. Check her website out. Get that, take that assessment. You need it. You know it. And then follow us. Mine, go to my website, Tanya Hoffman, one F, two N's, dot com. So check me out. And there's a, um, all kinds of fun things on there. And then Public Speakers Association. Make sure you're following me on there. We've got all kinds of a speakers assessment and all that kind of fun stuff, too. So get involved. Sandy's information is on there. Book her to come speak. She's spoken at my events for me. She's amazing. You definitely want her on stage. She's got so much information she could bring your audience. So make sure that you talk to her about coming and speaking at your next event. Yay. So, yay. So Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Come next time. You know I'm going to have an amazing guest. Yeah. And I will see you later. Bye. You, Bye. Go, go change some lives. <laughs>